All right, welcome back to the next video in this series. In the last video, we started designing our first level. Now that we have it all painted on using tile maps, uh, two different tile maps, we can now move some collisions into place. Just something I want to point out, it's probably pretty obvious, but uh, this is our game. These collisions and the player is our game. These tile maps without the collision, this is just artwork. This is just there. Our player does not interact with any of this. But I just wanted to point out the fact that when we do it this way, we can use tile maps as many as we want to paint our level and put the level together how we want it to look visually. And then we can go back through and use our collisions to make the level playable. And that's what we're going to do now. So I'm just going to start by getting all the ledges set up. So I'm going to uh, unlock collisions first. I can lock objects. So with collisions unlocked and selected, I am going to make our walls go all the way to the top on both sides. And then I'm going to select the floor and I'm going to drag out a copy, move that in. I'm just control click, drag out a copy. That is all that's happening here. And I'm just going to make sure that all my ledges are covered. I can probably zoom in a little. And when we get done, uh oh, don't want to change the angle. There we go. And those are our floors, except for our barrels. So what I'm going to do for the barrels is I'm going to click on the layout. I'm going to leave my snap to grid on, but I'm going to change the height to 16. Then I can zoom in and drag out a copy and just make it to where it just covers that top part like that. Then I can copy that, drag out another copy, put one there, another copy there, another copy there and another copy there. That should be it. And then let's uh, click on the layout again. I should have made the width 16 as well. So I'm going to make it 16 and I'm going to highlight this wall that we have set up on this barrel and I'm going to control click drag out a copy. And he can be the full size and drag out another copy. He can be the full size, drag out another copy. And you can leave these full size if you want. I'm just going to move him in. Uh, drag out a copy. And then drag out another copy. There we go. Now all our barrels are taken care of. I am going to drag a copy from here and just start filling in these walls. Drag in copies. And... Let's see, that's all our walls. Okay, just those two walls. Okay, I'm going to get our green jump through and drag out a copy, put him into place, drag out another copy, and I think that's all of our jump throughs. Okay, so for our springboards, we are going to need uh, one of these smaller yellow ones and we're actually probably gonna have to turn snapping off for this so I'm going to do that I'm going to turn snap to grid off then I can zoom in and just manipulate this to how I want it I want it to stick out from the springboard so that the player sprite or object hits the wall first and doesn't get thrown into the air without jumping on the spring. But we want it low enough that if he does jump, he hits the spring first instead of the wall and doesn't change directions. Okay. 
Let's go ahead and drag out a copy. Zoom in here. I'm going to put him like right about there. Okay. And then for this one, uh, we're going to do this one a little differently. I am going to, uh, I'm going to turn the snapping back on. And then I'm going to grab this one and drag out a copy. And I'm going to make it about that size. And actually, you know what? I'm going to turn the snapping off again. And I'm just going to drag this to the spring. So what's happening here is there's just this little space left in between the barrel and the spring. If I turn collisions off. And I don't want the player to fall down in there. So when the player comes up here, if he falls in this area, there is whoops, there is a floor there. So he'll just keep running until he either hits the wall or hits the spring. All right. And I think that is it for our collisions. The only thing we're missing collision-wise is our death collision but we do not have that set up yet. So we aren't going to worry about that just yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this. And I want to test and make sure that all our gaps are playable. I'm just gonna pretend like the, the spikes mean something. Uh, make sure everything is the right height and I can already tell this one is not. See, I made that one too high, so I'm going to have to bring everything back down. And that is my fault. I should have noticed that before this happened. So, I can see it right there. I'm going to zoom in, and I am going to turn my collisions off, and turn my bricks on. And I am just going to go through the task of moving all this stuff uh, down one or should I move it up one? You know I actually might be better off moving it up one because there's less I have to do if I start down here. So I'm gonna do that. With everything else locked and the collisions unlocked, we can take this entire row, just draw a box around it, and then press up on the keyboard. And since I have it uh, set to 16, I had to press it twice, but that moves it into place. And then I can do the same thing for this row. And then I'll do it for this row as well. And then uh, looks like I need to go back to my tile map uh, objects, get another barrel, replace that, erase the bottom part there. Okay. And I think that looks correct. Okay. So I left this part in because I wanted to show that even if you make a mistake, you know, there's ways to correct those mistakes. I mean, I got a little extra experience with working with tile maps as well. So I'm going to lock those and let's play this. And all right, pretend like the spikes are there and deadly. All right, much better. Can jump off the wall there, climbing up barrels, climbing up walls, looking good, working real good, and nice. All right, there is going to be our final goal will be in this area and there's a strategy to it there's a reason why it's in here but 
this uh, is a complete level and it's working out uh, quite well, I think. Okay, so I'm going to turn the collisions off and I am going to show you another very tedious part of this process. So if you zoom in, you'll notice that we have some rounded off brick and then we have just a clean cut of halfway through the brick. And that's because these tiles can sit next to each other and resemble a full brick wall with no creases. But it's ugly. So I'm going to go to our tile map bricks, unlock it, select it. Then I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And then I'll zoom in here. There we go. And I'll pull this out a little. So down here I have end caps. This far left one, you can see it has uh, some rounded edges on the left, but it's still a clean cut on the right on that bottom brick. The one next to it in the middle is the same thing, but it's uh, rounded off on the left edge. And this one in the middle is everything is rounded off. And we'll use those uh, towards the top of the level. I'll show you where those go. So I'm going to pick this left one. And zoom out just a little bit. And you see all these when I paint on them. See the difference it makes? These are all rounded edges. And then you got those that aren't. So this just makes it look better. And believe me, even zoomed out like this, they're noticeable in game. That's why I created these particular tiles for the tile set because I was tired of looking at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this entire level and I'm going to use these three blocks on all the edges. So if I go in here and I have a left edge, I'm going to replace that with a left edge. Right in here, that's a right edge, so I'm going to pick the right edge, my rectangle tool, and I'm just going to replace them all just on that one side. So now there's no sharp edges. Everything has a rounded off edge to it. So I'm going to go through this entire level and replace all the edge blocks. So real quick, I just want to show you something. When I replaced these, I'll undo this. You can see these uh, are not rounded off, but when I do replace them, I only replace to this spot because if I did this one, you see we have an, a line right here. It creates a crease. Of course, we don't want that. We want it to seem seamless, like it's part of the structure. So I skip over that part, and I just keep going down. Now on these jump through ledges, it does need the rounded off part because it doesn't meet on this bottom block here. All right, I just wanted to point that out. All right, so that is everything except this part up here. When we have a wall in the middle that's only one brick wide, we're going to use this one that's rounded on all the edges. So I'm going to use my rectangle tool and do it just like that. So you can see everything is rounded off. All right, so I have done all of that to my level. And you might be asking yourself, why didn't we just do this when we painted it the first time around? And the answer is because, honestly, it's easier this way and it takes less time doing it this way, believe it or not, because before we can just use this one block and we can paint everything, the entire level, not have to worry about that, and we can get done what we need to get done. When we go back over it, we can just use these three blocks, mainly just these two, but we can use these three blocks to round off all the edges throughout the whole level. Yeah, it takes some time, but one, it makes it look better, and two, it's it's not 
doesn't take that much time. You know, if you want to make a good game, you got to put all the effort into it. And that's what we're doing. I think that is going to wrap this up. We have successfully used tile maps to paint an entire level, to paint obstacles. We even use some extra tiles to make it look pretty. And let's just see what it looks like. There we go. Nice, crisp, and clean. Okay. That is going to do it for this video. In the next video, we are going to set up the camera. Oh, I would have died just then. <laughs> okay. In the next video, we are going to set up the camera system, which isn't going to take much time at all. We're going to get rid of this scroll tool that we have on our player and create a separate camera system and then maybe start programming this uh, player death with these spikes after that. But for now, that is the end of this video. We'll take care of some camera work next and I will see you then. Don't forget to save.